there, my beautiful, lovely, talented, and delightful internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Footless Joe, where I am still Joe and I am still missing a foot. And today we're gonna talk about pregnancy as an amputee. Right off the bat, no, I am not pregnant. Whew. Thank goodness, let's clear the air on that. But as I logged on to YouTube to just, you know, mindlessly binge watch some videos this afternoon, I saw that Mama Dr. Jones, which is a channel that I follow, she seems absolutely delightful, I really like her videos, check her out, just posted an interview with Rebecca Gregory, who is a Boston marathon bombing survivor and was pregnant as an amputee. Now I have not watched this video, but I'm very excited too because I've never really talked to anyone about pregnancy as an amputee. Like I was already terrified of pregnancy, like I, I don't want kids, but being pregnant while also dealing with a prosthetic and, and all of that, oh God, I have a lot of questions and a lot of curiosities. And so I'm so excited to go through this with you today. But first, a quick word from our delightful, lovely sponsor who I love working with. I am absolutely thrilled to be able to introduce you to our sponsor today. You guessed it, Ana Luisa Jewelry. I absolutely love being able to tell you about Ana Luisa, especially as we are in the midst of the holiday season and everyone's looking for gifts for people. Their exceptional quality is something I can personally attest to because I got this over a year ago. I've worn it quite a bit. It is just as lovely and sparkly and comfortable as it was the day I got it. They honestly have fair prices with no luxury markup with prices starting around $39. And one of my favorite things about them is that they are all about sustainability. All of their jewelry is carbon neutral, meaning that they offset 100% of their carbon emissions, starting with sourcing of their raw materials all the way to the disposal of the pieces. For me personally, one of my favorite things about online Louisa jewelry is that it helps me feel like pretty and feminine and lovely even if I'm just hanging out home in a sweatshirt. Their, their pieces aren't too gaudy and they also aren't too simple. They always make me feel lovely and complete my outfits whether I'm chilling at home in a hoodie and athletic shorts shown off camera or if I want to get super fancy and dressed up and go out on a date as soon as quarantine is over. Completely random side note, I also really like the clasps that they use for their necklaces in particular. I have a hard time with tiny motor movements sometimes and opening up necklace clasps is something I think everyone struggles with, but theirs are ridiculously easy and I can actually do it on my own and it doesn't hurt my fingers. If you yourself are a jewelry person or you know someone in your life who you're looking for a lovely gift for, please check out the link linked down below. Ana Luisa is an absolutely fantastic company. I love being able to work with them and I love being able to tell you about them. I'll let you in on a secret. If you if you look at many of my recent videos or my live streams, you'll pretty much always see me wearing either their earrings or necklace or something like that. So I, I, I honestly wear them just about every day right now at home. Check them out, link down below, and please let me know what you think. Without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, I call this look chic comfort. I, I got up and got dressed this morning with just like this turtleneck and my, my pretty jewelry and I was like, yeah, I look good. And then I got tired of that and wanted to be cozy so I stole my husband's sweatshirt. Don't tell him. But a few of the things that I'm curious about are the weight gain that comes with carrying another human inside of you and wearing prosthetics. Gaining any kind of weight, even a few pounds honestly, can make prosthetics change how they fit you, can become uncomfortable or can no longer fit anymore. So that's something I've always been freaked out about. Balance on a prosthetic leg when your center of balance is, is totally different. Also, probably on a pretty inconsequential side note, I've often wondered if women who are giving birth as amputees wear their prosthesis during giving birth? I'm assuming the answer is no, but I'm kind of curious. Full disclosure, like I said, I have never been pregnant, not something I currently plan on ever being. Who knows? And thus, pregnancy is something I only know about through stories of my friends and walking alongside them and, and things of that nature. So I am uh, really no expert and I'm looking forward to learning. Let's jump into a little bit about your pregnancies. I know you have Noah who was there with you that day and then now you have another uh, daughter as well? I do, Riley. They're okay, so cute. So tell me what were some of the differences before and after you know, the bombing and as well as losing your leg about the differences in your pregnancies? Well, the big thing was that doctors told me after the bombing, I spent 56 days in the hospital initially. And one of the things they said is, Rebecca, I'm so sorry, based on your internal injuries, we don't believe that you will ever be able to have another baby again. In 2015, I was doing pretty well. I had just gotten married and to my college sweetheart. And we really, really wanted a baby. And it came as kind of a surprise because I didn't think that I would be able to have one. Oh, and wow. so we went to the doctor and sure enough, she said, you're, you're pregnant. It was just a really amazing time because I thought to myself, 
know, in 2013, I was three feet from a bomb that should have killed both my son and I. And here I am in this new beautiful life and I get to have another baby. So I'm just like a little bit teared up. That's absolutely beautiful and a miracle. Did the pregnancy end up being more complicated or what would you highlight as some of the things that made it different than being pregnant before all of this? So the whole one leg thing makes it interesting. <laughs> and I have to be really careful. I think one of the things as far as like gaining weight. Okay, so that's always been one of my biggest fears too, is that as an amputee, if you gain weight, your legs don't fit the same way anymore. And beyond that, specifically with your center of balance being changed and your body constantly changing, from my understanding, using any kind of prosthetics become really difficult. Even a couple of pounds, my leg fits differently. Mm -hmm. And because of pregnancy and and swelling and other issues that I already have. I have to think about that a lot. I was still trying to be active. Exercise is a big part of my life, but it's it was hard. I mean, it, it was painful on my leg. I know that I was probably out of my leg more often times than I was in it. It was tough. There were a lot of things that were easy too. I mean, my pregnancy in general for the first couple of months went by really seamlessly, even though I was high risk, I was having more doctor's appointment. All in all, it was really, really good. With regards to the prosthetic leg, I haven't had a lot of patients who have been pregnant with that, but I've had a few. I would say the biggest problem that we would run into is difficulties with fitting. Even if you gain a normal amount of weight, there's some swelling in pregnancy that's very common. Did you have any problems with mobility towards the end because of problems with the prosthetic or were you able to tackle that? I was able to tackle that and I owe Good. a lot of that to my doctors, my prosthetists, because they were, you know, really, really mindful of the fact that they wanted me to be as comfortable as possible. So I would encourage anyone who's an amputee and has a prosthetic leg or, or two, um, to really just go into your prosthetist as often as you can if you have any sort of issue because a minor tweak is a really, really big thing when you're an amputee. So that makes a, a lot of sense. Sometimes it's the tiniest little things, like they'll shave a little bit extra off your socket, they'll put a little pad in there, and it looks like it wouldn't make any difference because it's so minuscule, but it makes walking actually bearable or comfortable. A caveat that I've, that I've wondered about is these appointments aren't free, generally speaking, and so if you're someone who's copay for those appointments or is paying out of pocket, it would make it really difficult to be able to have a leg that fits during pregnancy. Thankfully, currently I and the amputees I immediately know have medical coverage, but, but not everybody does. So I'm really glad that this was something she was able to do because it sounds like that was a, a huge determining factor in being able to actually stay active and stay moving during pregnancy. Also, this comfortable chic thing sounded like a good idea because I was cold, but now I'm really warm. So outfit change. At the seven month mark, I started to develop a really just small back pain. And it wasn't even painful. It was just this feeling that something might not be right. I told my husband, I said, I'm getting a little bit of pain in my back. I think we might need to go get this checked out. My doctor, we called her and immediately, she said, absolutely, go to the hospital right now. I'll meet you. And it ended up being me going into preterm labor. And oh. we would have had no idea, but my doctor was very, very good about making sure to go to the hospital and, and get wow. it checked out. You so any mothers out there, Please let me know if you feel like sharing, but something that I've always thought would be so disorienting about pregnancy and giving birth is obviously the fact you don't know when it's gonna happen, right? But especially when you're not expecting it for weeks to go into the hospital with some back pain and then come out with a with a baby. That seems like it would be so jarring. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about that the wrong way. But that's crazy that her doctor caught that and was like, yes, go to the hospital, and then she was actually in labor. Did they think that because of your presentation? I'm wondering if maybe the amputation itself had anything to do with their concern with that because we do get a little bit worried about venous stasis and, and circulation issues in some of our amputee patients. Oh. But is that ended up being what it was or was it something different? 
sometimes I'm like a guinea pig to people because they don't often know what to do with me. I mean, I have all of this shrapnel in my body. Of course, when I fill out my medical forms, it's, I got blown up by a bomb in 2013. Oh, and God. so they kind of Ooh. chalked it up to my injuries from that. It was I think it's really interesting that she brings that up because there are some heightened concerns with things like circulation as an amputee. They're just health issues your doctor needs to be aware of, like your doctor needs to know that you're an amputee and, and you should be aware of as well. There was this one particular doctor who had absolutely no bedside manner. Ooh. I'm in a bed and they're telling me the worst possible thing and she's basically telling me that I'm gonna die and my daughter's going to die too. It was just the way it was presented to me. I appreciate upfront honesty. This was more of just very brash. It is what it is. If if your daughter comes today, she's gonna die. I so that's something I don't understand about bedside manner or not. I've I've had really good doctors and I've had not awesome doctors and I also appreciate when people are blunt and upfront with me about like, here's what you're facing, here are your choices. But for someone to take the tone of like, you're gonna die and your kid's gonna die, uh, you know, it is what it is, what it is. That, 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 there's, that, that's no way for someone to be able to get through something. Like obviously that's the most disheartening or discouraging thing that you can hear. Rebecca, I'm really sorry that that was said to you. Bedside manner really does matter and it's not about lying to people or lying to patients or trying to make them feel better. I think it's about how you present often really difficult information. It was crazy because I ended up um, getting her out in 14 and a half minutes. Wow. Did you push a lot longer than that with no? Oh. This was pretty quick. I can't remember exactly how long. It was a lot more than 14 and a half minutes. <laughs> Not that fast. Was there any difference between delivery you know, before your amputation and after, or was it pretty much the same? It was pretty much the same, except my husband is so funny because during all of this, I mean, it was very stressful and everyone was sad. We had nurses crying and giving me <laughs> hugs. And it, it was so funny because I'll never forget this one moment where I couldn't feel, when they gave me my epidural, I couldn't feel my leg at all, obviously. And so, but I was so uncomfortable because of the phantom pain oh. that I was experiencing too. And so it was a really weird dynamic between the two. Oh, that's so weird. And so I was trying to get up in the bed to be able to kind of like move a little to try to get more comfortable. <laughs> and I, I told, I was the, to the nurses, I said, I can't feel my legs. And my husband, without skipping a beat, he said, you ain't got no legs. <laughs> <laughs> Humor is the best way of coping with a lot of things. Was your recovery any different after the birth than you remembered it being with Noah or was it about the same? It was about the same. I mean, the, the biggest thing is that, you know, not having a leg. I couldn't put my leg on right away after giving birth oh. because of the swelling. So it took a little bit of time to do that. So just the you know, the inconveniences of getting in the wheelchair. That's ah, that's a really interesting point. I didn't really fully think about that. Once you have the kid, your body is still changed. Like you're dealing with swelling or dealing with some weight gain still. And not being able to use a leg when you're used to generally being able to use a leg as you have a newborn, that's got to be a real challenge. That sounds really difficult. Like I get frustrated if I can't wear my leg for half the day because of swelling or pain. But the idea of not having a, a leg that's either comfortable or reliable or you just can't get on as you're going through this, like that's really, that's difficult. The everyday things that I think amputees have to deal with that are not necessarily normal, but they're normal to, <laughs> to us now. <laughs> yeah. One -leggers. Uh, so it was just that, but really, I mean, all in all, it was, it was pretty easy. So for starters, as I said, Rebecca's story is, is incredible. I followed her on social media for quite some time. We've exchanged like one set of messages back and forth, so I don't think I can call us friends, but I mean like, Rebecca, if you're watching this and you want to be friends, I mean, it'd, it'd be cool. I think you're pretty awesome. <laughs> be cool, Joe. Be cool. But what struck me from the amputee perspective watching this is it sounds like, yes, there were some things that were different. There were some complications, but that's kind of just life as an amputee. Things, there are always going to be like small difficulties or adjustments or things that are just different, right? Things you have to figure out an adjustment for. And it sounds like pregnancy is very much the same way. I'll be honest, after watching this, I, I almost feel, like I said, I never I never want to have kids, especially biological ones, but if for whatever reason that ever happened, I do feel a little bit more reassured that 
maybe it wouldn't be the end of the world. <laughs> Can you tell that I'm fairly terrified of pregnancy and children? Yes. Not children, childbirth. I'm not generally terrified of kids, but some, some are frightening for sure. So I've linked Mama Dr. Jones's channel down below. I've also linked Rebecca's TikTok. That's where I know her from. She is delightful. Her videos are absolutely hilarious. I aspire to one day be as funny as her and her husband. Their skits are amazing. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Go watch the original video. You can hear way more of Rebecca's story. Highly recommend. And uh, while you're here, if you want to hit that subscribe button, maybe that like button, maybe ring that, that notification bell if you're feeling extra generous. That would be fantastic and I'd appreciate it. A huge thank you again to our sponsor. All their information is linked down below. I would highly recommend them. Huge thank you to my patrons for continuing to support this channel and enabling me to do what I do here. Thank you. And you watching this video right now, thank you so much for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere in the world doing literally anything else and you chose to spend a few minutes with me and that means a lot to me. Thank you. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Have her from